This place is not what they say it is. No one who comes here leaves. I was determined to make the character of the TV show very different from the one in the, in the comic book, so I wanted to give him more complexity, really. So my starting point was Robert's book, The Rise of the Governor. He wrote two books, The Rise of the Governor and The, uh, the Road to Woodbury, and that, they're the character I wanted more the writers to concentrate on than the one that we know from the comic books. So I was a little bit nervous when it came out because I was thinking, well, people, you know, people were asking me, where's the eye patch and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But now that it's landed, the, the reaction has been really positive, so I'm over the moon about it, really. Shots came from up there. I'm gonna check it out. No, well, I'll handle it there. Sometimes bodies get in through the side fence. There's no need for anyone to panic. Someone help! What happened? Guys came through with guns. How many? I, I don't know. I think. Six or seven guys. I'd never seen them before. Are we under attack? What oh. should we do? Hey, 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 everyone, please just go home, lock your doors, huh? I read a lot about different leaders through history, really, and about the manipulation of populace, really, and how they get the people to live in fear. You see that in the first episode for the governor, which is episode three of this season, where he goes out and he sees the National Guard, they're there, they're all equipped with, you know, they've got their weapons and stuff, and you think, oh, this is great, this guy could welcome them back to Woodbury and fortify the place. And what he does is he shoots them all and brings back their, their, their weapons. And then he says to the populace that when he got there, they'd all been killed because they don't have what we have. They don't have these walls, they don't have these fences that we've built. So he makes them secure in their self, but he paints a very dark picture of the outside world and he's able to c control that. Prison's the perfect place to hold up. What once kept prisoners in now keeps biters out. And that's smart. You think of taking it over? Moving Woodbury there? People love it here because it feels like what was. Move them to damn cells surrounded by barbed wire. No. We got to take out the group that's living there. Let the biters move back in. No one will be the wiser. I don't think he, he inhabited leadership like that in the world before the event. It's been forced upon him slightly. So in that way, he's making it up as he goes along. He's pushing at doors to see if they open. He's pushing buttons. I think in the scene with Maggie, when he's sort of interrogating her, you know, that's not a seasoned interrogator. He sort of tries different things and they work with her. And he's amazed at that. But it's a challenging world he lives in. And I think he's becoming a victim of his own power, his own darkness. What can I say? Hasn't been a night like this since the walls were completed. And I thought we were past it. Where we leave him at the end of the first half is in a very, you know, his daughter's been killed, he's lost his eye, his city, his town has been attacked. And his people, they want revenge. They're, they're a bloodthirsty people. He wants to keep that anger there because he wants to use it. And I think that's going into the second half. I think, you know, it'll be interesting to see how he deals with that blackness inside himself. What should we do with them, huh? What I've liked about the season so far is it's full of surprises. What you think is going to happen doesn't happen. And when it, when it does happen, it happens in a different way than you thought it was going to happen. It's surprising in its development, and I hope that surprise, surprising nature will carry on into the second half, particularly with around Rick and the governor and what's going to happen between these two men. Because, you know, they're not dissimilar people, I think. You know, they're certainly, you know, they have their people they want to protect. They have their fear of the outside world. Rick is a very different character this season to the seasons we've seen him before. He's, you know, he does things in that prison. When they take over that prison, he does things which the Rick before would have had real moral consciences about, uh, conscience about, and he doesn't have that. He seems to be very happy to shoot these guys or, or fight, fight real people as opposed to walkers. The event and the, the world they live in brutalizes you in a way that is you would like to keep hold of some of your humanity, your, all of your humanity, but it slowly goes through your fingers, really. And I think that's happening to Rick as well as happening to the government. You wanted your brother. Hey, you got him. 